Hello, I'm Carrie O'Shea Gorgon. Welcome to AppFire Presents, the best ITSM show by AppFire. Today, we're going to tackle the question, what is the difference between Jira service management and Jira software? And to help us is Rachel Wright, entrepreneur, process engineer, Atlassian certified Jira administrator, author of the Jira strategy admin workbook, and the ultimate guide to Jira migration. So if anybody can help us with this, Rachel can. AppFire Presents. The best ITSM show by AppFire. Rachel, help. What's the difference between <laughs> Jira Service Management, JSM, and Jira Software? Well, you know, Jira is my favorite topic, so <laughs> I love talking about this stuff. Um, so, you know, Jira's been around for almost 20 years now. Uh, and when we got started, you know, there was kind of one flavor of Jira. It ran on a server. Um, and then, you know, about 2015, they started creating different application types. Um, so we went from Jira Core and Jira Software. Uh, Core was renamed to Jira Work Management, and that's targeted more towards business uh, entities of the organization. And then Jira Software is obviously for software development with specific features for teams to help them, you know, check in code, um, you know, progress with the projects they're working on. And then Jira Service Management, which used to be called Jira Service Desk, is the newest version. And that's tailored specifically to support teams. And okay. uh, all these work together, which is the great part. But Rachel, which one is Jira? When people say <laughs> Jira, <laughs> which well, one I do call they it, mean? Yeah, I call it regular Jira, uh, which, you know, that's not a real thing. That's just what I call it. Um, but that's Jira Work Management today. Okay, Jira Work Management, which is like a other different thing. Well, I mean, it's all the same um, application. It's more features for different audiences built on top of Jira. Okay. So Jira service management, what are some of the features it has that are, make it specific to that audience? Its audience. Absolutely. Well, the first great thing is it has a customer portal. So your non-technical users or maybe your external users can log into a very simple interface and request everything they want. They don't have to be Jira users. You don't have to license them and they don't have to know anything about software at all. It's just like, you know, filling out any form on the web. Um, so that's very, very popular. Um, also, it integrates with Confluence as a knowledge base if you have Confluence. So sometimes users can, you know, self-solve their problem without having to enter a support request. That's always preferable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if Absolutely. People can fix it themselves. So right. are there more or that's like pretty much the distinguishing features? Oh, that? there's so many more. Um, there's, also <laughs> <laughs> there's also great features. We have 10 targeted, minutes. Uh, so, you yeah, know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll get as many as we can in. Um, but there's great features targeted towards the support team as well. Um, and those are the agents who fulfill the requests or sometimes I call them the technicians. Um, they have a different view that is specifically support related. Um, they are in JIRA. It looks like JIRA, but there's some different features. Um, service level agreements, for example, to tell them how quickly, you know, we promised as a company we're going to resolve this issue versus that issue. Um, also queues, which are very similar to filters, uses JQL, but they're shared between the entire team. And then really nice, you can custom brand the emails that your customers get sent and you can custom brand the uh, language that's used for them too. So it's really customer focused um, and it's just great to use. And it's so nice that companies don't have to have two separate applications and make them talk to each other. You can just have everything looking like Jira. And that's Jira Service Management. <laughs> JSM. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then Jira software, what do we have in Jira software that's unique to that user base? Sure. Well, you know, they're doing different kinds of work. Um, and actually, sometimes, um, you know, you when a support request comes in from a customer, you need the help of a developer, you know, maybe some code is needed. So you link those issues together. The developer works in Jira software, the support agent works in Jira service management. And special features for the developer are integration with build tools like Bamboo or Bitbucket, the sprints, so they can track how much work they're completing, um, story points, so they can estimate in a different way that's not time specific, so it's a relative measurement. Um, Based on rent effort, boards. right? Yeah, right, absolutely. And that those boards are so popular. Everybody loves having their board. They log in in the morning and they see where all their stuff is. And that's a great uh, status-based view uh, where you see your work in columns based on how far along it is in its life cycle. If you could have your perfect Jira, like what, what features would be in it? Like just Rachel's Jira. All right. So this is a 
strange idea, but, and they're kind of moving towards this. Um, I would have JIRA and Confluence be one application. Um, now you can make them talk to John each other. John Fluence or Kira? <laughs> I like John Fluence. That's good. <laughs> um, they're, they're integrating, right? So today you can create JIRA issues from Confluence. You can create Confluence pages from JIRA. Um, but it's definitely a different experience. And I think it would be great if, you know, for the technical audience, it could just be one application that's built right in natively. But that's like your wish list for the future. Yeah, never going to happen, but it's a great, it's a great wish for later. <laughs> <laughs> so then are there, are there other things, you mentioned there are other versions of Jira for other audiences. Can you tell us about just a couple of them? Well, sure. So we've got the uh, three, what I call application types. So Jira work management, Jira software, Jira service management. And then within um, cloud, um, we have four different plans uh, that have different features. So there's the free version, standard, premium, and enterprise. And then in addition to that, we have two other deployment types of server, which we know has been decommissioned, but still around for a while, and data center. So you put those all together and there's really a lot of options out there of how you want to use it, um, you know, and, and what you want to do with the software in your specific situation and environment. That's before you start putting apps into it, like AppFire obviously right. has a lot of apps that can help you customize it and make it do things exactly like manage your SLAs, for example. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. And things like that. So, or create automations with canned responses that go out. Like there's tons you can do in addition mm -hmm. to like the native functionality of any of these. Yeah. Or chat live with the, you know, the customer who's submitting the support request. Um, that's the beauty of this whole platform and this whole ecosystem. You know, if Jira doesn't do it natively, somebody has written an app that does it and you can bring that in very easily. So then it's really just a question of not so much just Jira, which one's the real Jira, but like which one's the Jira for your specific team. Right, right. And they Based all work together, does. right? It's not like you have to have all or you can only have one. They all work together, um, you know, and they're targeted towards different use cases and different teams. Uh, for example, the, the business view, um, you know, business teams aren't doing sprints probably, and they're not estimating their work in story points. So, you know, that stuff is not front and center for them. They have different views that are simpler and um, some neat and new interesting views in cloud, um, like a calendar view, a timeline view. So it's, it's really purpose built and that's exciting to see. So it all comes down to what the end user is going to need to use this for, which is what we should all be thinking about all the time anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. How to make the end users life easier. Rachel, thank you so much for clearing that up for me. I, it's a silly question that I had. <laughs> thank you question. for explaining. I appreciate it. You're always so gracious. Rachel Wright. Thank you. And this is the best ITSM show by Outfire. For more episodes, visit hub.outfire.com. We'll see you next time.